the post office closes, then the pub, and often the village school. It's the familiar tale of decline in our rural villages. Later this afternoon, the government will say what it intends to do to try to turn things round. The proposals will include attempts to provide cheaper housing for local people, better public transport, and help for farmers. In the past 30 years, Shropham in Norfolk has lost nearly everything. The school, the post office, the general store, the regular bus service and both pubs have all closed down. Shropham is typical of Britain's rural villages. Young people leave as they can't find work. The old are often isolated. It's particularly hard for the, for the older people, those, those people who were born, bred, uh, worked here and now elderly who, who perhaps haven't got their own car and getting to, to shop and that is, is very difficult for them. Get, getting pensions, they have to rely on other people to, to transport them about or whatever. Most English villages have no store or doctor or daily bus service. Today's rural white paper will announce more cash to bring some of these back, including better transport. It's not just poor services that's a problem. There's also a lack of affordable housing. These homes have been built specifically for people on low incomes. Here in Hinton Charterhouse in Somerset, house prices have soared as commuters move out from nearby Bath. Low-cost flats built by the Rural Housing Trust charity are a godsend for Joyce Day, who feared she'd have to move away as she grew older. My husband, if he'd still been alive, and me, would have hated it if we'd had to go on into town or into a um, sheltered accommodation. There'll be more cash for some cheaper homes, but charities fear not enough. Margaret Gilmore, BBC News, Somerset. Our correspondent Rachel Ellison is in the village of St Martin's in Shropshire, which has already taken steps to help itself. Rachel. Well, Anna, I'm where the action is here in St. Martin's in Shropshire. I'm at Stan's Superstore, one of the only shops here. It has a cash point, which was a big wow in this community. But there's still no bank, no chemist. The post office is up for sale, and the doctor only comes here one, for one hour each day. But with me is Vivian Byrne, who is the regeneration officer for this community. What are you doing? Basically, we face the same four issues that any rural community faces problems with. Transport, housing, employment, and youth. But we're desperately trying to do something for the youth here. We're trying to build a new youth community centre because the children have nothing to do. The young people hang around at night with nothing to do. They hang around the, the roundabout, don't, don't they? But there's terrible transport problems because if they do want to go out, they can't come back again. So tell us more about that. Yes, they can only go as far as the nearest market town of Oswestry, and the last bus back is 8 o'clock, so you can't have much of an enjoyable night if you're going to be on the bus at 8 o'clock, can you? Another feature of stopping the exodus of young people from the community, of course, is employment. Now, there is a, employment, um, a specific employment issue, isn't there, just over the border in Wales? Yes, because this is a border village and Wales is just down the road, most of the industry goes there because obviously there are generous grants. So they can't attract any industry here, which of course there isn't the choice of employment. So Thank you very much indeed, Vivian Byrne, a regeneration officer for, for St Martin. Um, with that, they're all hoping that this afternoon's white paper will bring the crucial changes and crucial cross-integral approach required for countryside communities and the issues they face. Anna. Thank you, Rachel.